Chapter 51 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 051 All for Not Translator Mianbao Editor Elrianth edited by Red Shit In the midst of their journey, Old Lu's expression suddenly changed and he cursed out loud. What is it, Old Lu? The other four of the party stopped in place together, looking at the angry Old Lu. A hint of frustration flashed in Old Lu's eyes. He said, gnashing his teeth, my white, headed falcon is dead. Sister May's eyebrows jumped up uncontrollably, asking doubtfully, did it encounter some powerful flying beast? But isn't your white, headed falcon always alert? Why would it die all of a sudden? I don't know. It sent me a message earlier, indicating that it seemed to have found some amazing treasure. I allowed it to go check things out, and it died in the next moment. Old Lou naturally had no idea how the white-headed falcon died. It didn't even have the time to send a distress signal before losing its life. The party's expressions turned grave. Perhaps some powerful exotic beast was in the grasslands ahead, and managed to catch it by surprise, killing it in one strike. L.RG If that was true, why is the Eliforce herd still fine? Old Lu didn't suspect his subdued beast was slain by Zhang Che. When the white, headed falcon was carrying out its scouting mission, it wouldn't leave the sky at all. No ordinary beastmaster would have a chance of killing it. The five of them stopped in place, hesitating. The grasslands ahead suddenly held an unknown fear. The circumstances surrounding the white, headed falcon's death were truly too strange, leaving others confused. Moreover, Old Lu mentioned previously that the white-headed falcon had sent him a message before its death, that it discovered some treasure, which made this matter even more puzzling. The group looked at each other. In the end, the short dot-haired woman turned her head toward Sister May, asking, then, Sister May, are we still advancing forward? Sister May thought for a while with her brow furrowed. Finally, she grit her teeth. Yes. Since we're already here, it really leaves me unwilling to give up just like that. However, without the white, headed falcon scouting the way ahead for us now, everyone needs to be on their guard. Once you discover anything off, immediately turn to run. You mustn't hesitate in the slightest. The rest of them nodded gravely, and they continued walking forward with quick steps. Soon after the group set off once more, and before they covered another 500 meters, their faces changed again. Not good. Ding Phone Corporation's men have probably got here. Why are they so fast? The rumbling footsteps of exotic beasts approached them from behind rapidly. Who else could they be, if not Ding Phone Corporation's men? Go, we'll find a place to hide first. We'll observe them before taking any other action. Sister May's brow furrowed deeply. Their plans today were met with one setback after another, leaving her doubting whether her choices were correct. Just as the five of them hid themselves, the group of beastmasters from Ding Feng Corporation led by Zhang Yujie came galloping in from a distance away. For long journeys, Zhang Yujie and the few who owned Mount Dot Yipe subdued beasts were faring much better. The rest revealed traces of fatigue on their faces, but their eyes were shining with excitement. This time, if they could find and slay a large Eliforce herd, not only would everyone achieve great merits, they would even be rewarded with an Eliforce card. Their future journeys would be much more convenient. Watching the terrain before them gradually opening wider, a smile curled up on Zhang Yujie's handsome face. He encouraged the others loudly, everyone, endure a little longer. If my guess was right, after we enter the open lands in front, there will definitely be traces of Eliforce herd activities. As long as we successfully hunt a herd of Eliforces, I'll personally request recognition of your merits when we get back. Hearing this, everyone looked even more excited, and cheered out loud in unison. The group moved past at flying speed. Sister May and the rest of her party came out from their hiding spots with bitter expressions. The short dot haired woman looked at Sister May hesitantly, Sister May, are we still going? Sister May didn't make a sound. 
Instead, she swept her gaze across the few of them first. Seeing as they had unwilling looks on their faces, she nodded heavily, we'll go. I don't believe Ding Fong Corporation's men can kill every single Eliforce. Moreover, if there are any unknown dangers ahead, we have the Ding Fong Corporation's men to take them on for us. We only need to proceed cautiously, even if there aren't any gains, we wouldn't be in danger at the very least. After slaying the white, headed falcon, the grave expression on Zhang Che's face didn't lessen in the least. He didn't know who had their eyes on him, but their aim was probably the same as him. The Eliforce heard on the grasslands. If it was in the past, Zhang Che wouldn't care about any of this at all. He didn't have the ability to hunt the herd, anyway. If others wanted to try their hand at them, he'd just let them do it. But now, Han Xue had become his pet. This fellow obviously cared for his ex-underlings. As his master, how could he watch idly by the side as they were being hunted? Han Xue, oh, Han Xue, although you won't let your master massacre your underlings, now someone else has laid their eyes upon them. I can't possibly keep them safe by myself. You better get them to leave this place as soon as possible, moving deeper into the grasslands. Hopefully they can still make it in time. Zhang Che caressed Han Xue's cheek tenderly, telling it of the situation he had just discovered. After hearing what Zhang Che said, Han Xue let out a few nays, looking at him, its eyes shining with gratitude. It looked as if it understood Zhang Che's words. In the next moment, the golden Eliforce king moved with great strides toward the Eliforce herd a short distance away. It cried out loud, Zilvulf, as it ran. As Han Xue's reverberating cries were heard, the relaxed Eliforce herd suddenly fell silent, and turned around in unison, galloping deeper into the grasslands. For a short while, Zhang Che could only hear the rumblings of the hooves filling his ears. The entire herd of Eliforces were like the tide, spreading out into the verdant grasslands and quickly vanishing. The Eliforce herd speed erupted, and soon ran out to about a kilometer away. Watching his ex-underlings gradually going further away, Han Xue suddenly raised his neck and let out another reverberating neigh, his cry filled with loneliness and reluctance. Zhang Che seemed to feel that Han Xue was feeling down, and extended his hand to caress his neck as consolation. Don't worry. I'll bring you back here in the future to visit them if an opportunity arises. With Zhang Che's assurance, the golden Eliforce king neighed cheerfully. After taking a look behind him, the corners of Zhang Che's lips hooked up into a mocking smile, wondering what look would the party that was following him have on their faces when they discovered that this area was empty, with not a single Eliforce around. Let's go, we have to leave here quickly. Zhang Che patted Han Xue's neck. The godly mount under him immediately lengthened its gait, galloping towards the deeper part of the grasslands in another direction. Not more than ten minutes after Zhang Che left riding on Han Xue, Zhang Yujie, and the rest of the Ding Feng Corporation's beastmasters finally arrived at the grasslands. However, seeing the area before them had obvious signs of activities of a huge crowd of creatures, yet the grasslands was empty, the expressions on their faces were simply a sight to behold. Someone got ahead of us. We came too late. For the first time, Zhang Yujie's suave smile was missing from his handsome face, and he was gloomy. Zhang Shao, there should be a large herd of Eliforces here not long ago, and seemed to have run in this direction. Should we give chase? A beast master looked toward Zhang Yujie from the side, looking regretful, yet carried a hint of eagerness on his face. No, let's go back. Zhang Yujie turned his mount around instead, riding back in the direction he had come from. Leaving the fact that the grasslands ahead was too far away from the safe zone, there were too many uncertain risks involved in pursuing them. Why would the Eliforces around here previously migrate away? That added another layer of fog to Zhang Yujie's mind. There must be something behind the anomaly. For safety reasons, he decided not to give chase. He felt regretful, however, knowing that there was a large herd of Eliforces here, and yet all he did so far was all for naught. Chapter 52 You are listening at novelfull.audio 
Chapter 052, The First Meal of Meat in the Beast World Translator Mianbao Editor Elrianth edited by Red a strong wind whistled, inflicting pain on any surface it touched. The golden elephors king was like a scarlet bolt of lightning, whizzing through the vast grasslands at maximum speed, just like a supercar, but without the rumblings of the engine. The oncoming wind kept blowing at his mouth and nose. Zhang Che almost felt like he was suffocating, struggling to open his eyes. He could only hug on to Han Xue's neck tightly, his body leaning forward, to let Han Xue take some of the air pressure off him. It was only then that it got a little better for him. This speed is freaking nearing 200 km per hour, isn't it? After leaving earlier, in order to test how fast could Han Xue run, Zhang Che told him to let loose and start running. And now, he discovered, to his misery, that this feeling was so amazing and yet terrible. Other than the whistling of the wind, he almost couldn't hear anything else. Although the experience of riding under such circumstances wasn't very good, Zhang Che felt incredibly excited. Just this alone, other than flying dot type beasts, it was almost impossible for other ordinary exotic beasts to catch up to Han Xue. That also meant that his safety would be greatly helped from now on. Moreover, Han Xue still had the lightning charge skill. With a flash during crucial moments, he could be 200 meters away. Using it to avoid long-range attacks or sneak attacks from enemies would simply prove be awesome when needed. The only regret was that lightning charge has a cooldown time of half an hour, a pretty considerable flaw. But even if it had a flaw, it was still a skill, and an attribute that only beasts at gold quality or higher could have. Unlike beasts who were below gold quality, even if you wished for a useless skill, that dream would never be realized. As such, Zhang Che's lucky was really not bad. The gold dot quality subdued beast, the mutated puffer sword, had a skill, the gold dot quality pet, Han Xue, also has a skill. His luck was as good as heaven dot defying. One had to know that being gold dot quality was only the prerequisite of having a skill. Not all gold dot quality exotic beasts would have them. Running at high speed, Zhang Che suddenly felt that Han Xue seemed to have knocked into something. He hurriedly ordered it to slow down, to prevent hurting its legs. After all, Han Xue's defensive capabilities were rather weak. Although it was still much better than ordinary animals, its safety wasn't guaranteed when running at high speed. Haven't you heard of a bird causing an air accident, or a high-speed jet being able to cut steel? When speed reached a certain limit, even a speck of dust could contain extreme destructive force. When Han Xue finally came to a stop, Zhang Che hurriedly jumped off and checked on its limbs carefully. Even though this fellow didn't seem to look unwell in the least, Zhang Che didn't dare to be careless. This fellow was different from subdued beasts, who he could recall into his spiritual sea and would recover by devouring the seven-dot-colored fog from the crystal. Zhang Che finished checking Han Xue's front limbs, and didn't discover any problems. However, when his gaze fell onto Han Xue's left rear leg, his heart immediately tightened. An eye-dot-catching blood stain entered his sight. He really was hurt. Zhang Che hurriedly stooped down his body and went closer to take a better look. His anxiety was simply indescribable, did Han Xue accidentally knock onto a rock or some other obstruction when it passed through the grasses earlier, but other than looking a little fatigued, this fellow doesn't seem any out of the ordinary. When he got closer and took a better look, Zhang Che discovered that the blood was only a stain on Han Xue's rear leg. This big fellow wasn't injured at all. Lucky. I was almost scared to death. The burden in his chest was lifted, and Zhang Che finally felt relieved. Immediately afterwards, he couldn't help but wonder, dot that blood stain, how exactly did it come about? Zhang Che shifted his gaze in the direction he came from, then trotted back, focusing on whatever entered his vision. After walking less than a hundred meters out, he saw a badly mangled gray figure lying on the grass. It was shaped like a wild rabbit, but its size was at least two times bigger. This was the thing Han Xue stepped on earlier. Zhang Che quickly walked closer. 
this rabbit dot like creature's head was crushed into a mush of meat. Even so, Zhang Che's focus wasn't on that. Eh. What exotic beast is this? It actually left a corpse behind. According to the rules of the world on this side, other than fighting between exotic beasts, shouldn't there be no corpses left behind by the hunting of exotic beasts done by beast masters and their subdued beasts? Could it be that this rabbit dot like creature wasn't an exotic beast, but an ordinary animal? Zhang Che really wanted to check on this thing's attributes using his cheat, but there wasn't any reaction to it. Perhaps it was because this thing is already dead, and his cheat effects wouldn't be triggered. Or, perhaps it was due to Han Xue not being his subdued beast, therefore its kill had left a corpse behind. If that was truly the case, then that was undoubtedly a piece of good news. Even so, he had no way of determining whether this thing was an animal or an exotic beast. As such, Zhang Che was unable to wrap his mind around this matter in the end. Unable to get a clear answer, Zhang Che could only pick up this thing's corpse and continue forward in the end. He could ignore this problem for now. The key thing was that he could eat some fresh meat tonight. This was his first meal consisting of meat since he entered the beast world. Just thinking about it excited him. Here, here. We got some good stuff. Do you want some, Han Xue? Zhang Che lifted the rabbit dot like creature's several kilograms dot heavy corpse, waving it in front of Han Xue as he walked back to the golden elephors king side. Han Xue showed a disgusted expression, however. It took a few steps back, obviously not fond of the thing in Zhang Che's hands. Right, Han Xue was a herbivore. What did he mean by bringing a bloody corpse up to its face? Looks like we have a difference between us when it comes to food. Zhang Che shook his head, ignoring Han Xue's disgusted expression. Instead, he looked back at the spoils in his hand happily. It weighed over a dozen Jean superscript one. Even after skinning it and removing its innards and bones, there should be about three to four kilograms left, enough for him for two or three meals. Even so, here came the problem. Lighters and the likes were useless in here. How was he going to light a fire here? Did he have to drill wood to start a fire? That method should work theoretically, but Zhang Che knew that this definitely wasn't as simple as it sounded. Even if he was provided with all the tools, perhaps only 5 out of 10 people would succeed in starting a fire, and that would be considered achieving excellent results. Moreover, Zhang Che didn't have the relevant tools at hand. It would be even tougher to start a fire now, perhaps as difficult as getting a rooster to lay eggs, or a man giving birth to a baby. Ed, note. Um what? Then what the heck am I supposed to do? Do I have to have my first meal of meat in the beast world by eating it raw? Ah, that vexation in Zhang Che's heart. He was so anxious that he nearly scratched his head in frustration, his anger rising. If it wasn't for the fact that technological products were unusable in the beast world, he really wanted to send a message to his classmates, asking them how to solve the predicament he was in that I'm waiting online, urgent. Underscore 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 translators note. 1. Gene. A Chinese unit for weight. Each gene is about 500, China, or 600, a few other Asian countries, grams, depending on the nation in context. Or, just think pounds, if you are American slash English. Chapter 53 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 053 Are you guys here to give me free experience? Translator. Mianbao Editor Elrianth edited by Red Alas, not even an electronic lighter functioned properly in the beast world, not to mention the more technologically advanced personal terminals. Thus, even if Zhang Che waited until the end of time, no one would come offer him any advice. Hmm. Right, an electronic lighter is useless, but what about those flint lighters? Zhang Che suddenly thought of a question, his heart immediately shook. 
Regretfully, however, a distant fire wouldn't boil the water close at hand. So what if a flint lighter worked? Did he have to specially make a trip back? With that lost time, it would be better to directly ask someone in the safety zone to take care of it for him. Forget it, I'll stop thinking about starting a fire for now, and go find a water source to clean this thing up first. Shaking his head self. Mockingly, Zhang Che mounted onto Han Xue once more, scanning around him to look for the nearest source of water. There would definitely be a stream somewhere in this vast grassland, no questions asked. Otherwise, what would the creatures living here drink? It was only a matter of time before he found it. Zhang Che shifted his gaze towards the horizon in a certain direction. That was one of the V-shaped outlines of the mountain range extending behind him. That mountain range was so tall, there would probably be a mountain stream flowing along the ravines to the grasslands here. As long as he kept looking along the foot of the mountain range, he would surely find water. It was easier than searching in the endless grasslands. Sure enough, before he even got close to the towering cliffs, Zhang Che saw several waterfalls falling from an extremely high altitude, scattering into a curtain of mist. It was pretty good this way. Even if he can't start a fire in the end, at least he could clean the carcass first. Qian Wei City, the Ding Fong Corporation Building Zhang Yujie was standing expressionlessly, like a lone pine tree. In front of him, an employee was bending his waist slightly, his head lowered, his forehead full of sweat. So, regarding that Sun Che, you guys basically found nothing on him. Without waiting for the employee to reply, Zhang Yujie waved his hand, gesturing for him to leave. That employee immediately felt as if he was pardoned, and lowered his waist further, stepping backwards. Only when he reached the door did he turn around and leave. When he shut the door to this office, he let out a long sigh of relief. Zhang Dashao superscript one seems so amiable usually. I didn't expect him to have such a fearsome aura around him when he puts on a serious face. It seems like the Ding Fong Corporation has truly found a worthy successor. In the office, Zhang Yujie recalled his transaction with Zhang Che previously. He couldn't help but reveal a slight bitter smile, shaking his head. Perhaps he shouldn't have acted so pretentiously, and thoroughly investigated that Sun Che's identity earlier. Thinking of his failed operation, and the ridiculing looks on his two good.4. Nothing brothers, Zhang Yujie's mood took a dive. He could faintly guess that Sun Che must have had something to do with the sudden disappearance of the Elephorce herd at the grasslands behind the mountain range, but the details of it really left him confused. However, thinking of this, the depths of that Sun Che's strength were really unfathomable. Not only did he make the entire herd of Elephorces leave, he even had the guts to go deeper into the grasslands. That was not something ordinary beastmasters could do easily. Forget it. The investigation ends here. It's better to make friends with that guy as best as we can in the future. It's way better to be friends than enemies with such a figure. Zhang Yujie was thinking, since he already had a pleasant transaction with that Sun Che, and they didn't have an acrimonious falling dot out with each other for this matter either, it would probably still greatly benefit himself and the Ding Fong Corporation if he made friends properly with him. Unlike how Zhang Yujie was so at ease, the few people who lost a white, headed falcon all had gloomy expressions on their faces when they returned in the end. Especially the owner of the white, headed falcon, Old Lu. That was his most capable subdued beast. He only got it through a stroke of luck back then, and it was a great assistant to him. Be it scouting for exotic beasts or hunting them, it had proved itself to be extremely useful. Now that it lost its life on that grassland under such unknown circumstances, it truly left him bleeding in his heart, as if he had just lost his parents. It could be said that they took a double loss on this impromptu operation that was born from greed. Without a pair of sharp eyes in the sky from today on, their profits would surely shrink by a large margin. The one responsible for all this, Zhang Che, was currently squatting by the side of a converged stream of river under the foot of the mountain range, focused on cleaning the carcass of the unknown exotic beast in his hand. 
the knife Huang Tailan had gifted him flew about up and down in his hand. First he cut off the smashed head, followed by skinning it and cutting it open from the chest, removing its innards. The series of actions was rather delightful. Of course, it would be perfect if the skin and fur he threw away to the side weren't there. TSK TSK, my technique still needs some polishing. Now, then, comes the noble problem that concerns the survival of humans, how to start a fire. The ingredients were prepared. If he still couldn't start a fire, all the work he had done so far would be for naught. He can't possibly eat them raw. The principle behind drilling wood to obtain fire is only making use of the friction caused to ignite flammable objects. Although I can't do that, I can choose a more reliable method. Zhang Che looked at the cliff not far away from him. A glint of light suddenly flashed in his eyes as he strode over. Walking to the face of the cliff, Zhang Che looked for some flammable grass and chose a spot to place them. He looked at the alloy knife in his hand, thinking inwardly, that whether I succeed or not all depends on this. In the next moment, Zhang Che suddenly raised the alloy knife and slashed continuously at the rock cliff, causing a wave of screeching sounds. Countless rock bits and powder fell, yet not a single spark could be seen. Gah, the knife is too sharp it can't produce the frictional effect at all. Zhang Che fell silent for quite a while, looking blankly at the fresh marks on the rock wall. He was too naive, this method didn't work at all. It might work if the knife was an iron rod instead, but where is he going to find one now? Naturally, it was impossible to find one right now, but Zhang Che found something even more fitting than an iron rod. The fiery scorpion was summoned out. Following its master's command, it raised its pincer and rubbed madly against the cliff, producing a ear-piercing sound, causing Zhang Che's eyes to light up that IT works. Soon, a bunch of sparks flew down and landed on the grass he had placed on the ground. A wisp of green smoke immediately rose slowly, and quickly turned into a flame, illuminating Zhang Che. Ha, I'll reward you with a piece of meat later. Zhang Che hurriedly used dried tree branches to layer on the burning grass from below like a cross and placed them under the pile of dried leaves and branches he had prepared beforehand. Soon, a vigorous bonfire was burning. When the fat of that rabbit dot like exotic beast racked above the fire was sizzling, its aroma wafted out, Zhang Che really wanted to laugh out excitedly. It wasn't easy, to finally have his first piping hot meal in the beast world. However, before the roasted meat above the fire was fully cooked, Zhang Che suddenly heard Han Chue neighing from the side, its voice filled with fear. Dot Zhang Che hurriedly turned his head to look. In the bushes by the side, a group of brown dot furred wolves had come up before he noticed them. Their green eyes were filled with their greedy desire for food. Zhang Che wasn't shocked but pleasantly surprised by this, good boys, did you know I was trying to advance to tier 3 Beastmaster and came here to gift me experience. Underscore 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 translator's note. 1. Da Shao. As mentioned previously, Shao, is a less formal way of calling someone young master, Xiaoye. Da Xiao, literally meaning big young, refers to his status as the eldest of the young masters. Chapter 54 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 054 Burnt Translator. Mianbao Editor. Elrianth edited by Red equals 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 Grassland Brown, Furred Wolf, Level. 2 star, level 17, quality. Bronze characteristics. Gathers in packs, excels in using their numerical advantage to hunt their prey weakness. Poor defense in abdominal area, vulnerable to fire attribute attacks potential. D rank cultivating directions. Equals 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 although he didn't know if these grassland brown, Furred wolves were here because they saw the golden elephorce king or they were attracted by the fragrance of the roasted meat, all of that didn't matter anymore. 
Zhang Che only knew that after killing these hundred dot plus two dot star grassland brown, furred wolves, he would be much closer to advancing into a tier three beast master. Really, everything was working in his favor. Previously he was still troubled over finding another species that gathered in groups after letting the herd of Eliforces go. Unexpectedly, another prey appeared immediately afterwards to supply him with experience. Jean Che nearly laughed out loud from this. However, these grassland brown, furred wolves were obviously afraid of the fire. Although their green eyes were staring at Zhang Che's side, they didn't take the initiative to launch an offense immediately. Instead, the golden Elephors king to the side became their number one target. Following Han Xue's fearful cry, a few grassland browned, furred wolves immediately separated from the wolf pack and pounced at Han Xue, grunting lowly. Despite the fact that Han Xue was a two-dot star gold-dot quality beast, his strong suit didn't lie in attacking. Facing the encirclement of several of his natural predator, he let out a long neigh in fear, and ran towards Zhang Che like a bolt of lightning to take cover. Hey, you're a gold-dot quality exotic beast. Can't you bring out your dignity? Zhang Che felt a little at a loss for words, seeing Han Xue running towards him. This fellow was good in everything other than his offensive capabilities. It seemed like there wouldn't be any use for him in the future, other than using him as a mount. Han Xue didn't care about Zhang Che's mocking. He looked at Zhang Che pitifully, as if he was saying, our enemies are too great in number. It's better for us to run. Let's quickly escape. Useless fellow. There are so many delicious prey right in front of me. How could I give up on them just like that? Why don't you run by yourself first, and come back when I'm done with these wolves? Hanshua turned to look at the wolves surrounding them in all directions. He let out a few low neighs and suddenly turned into a streak of light, entering Zhang Che's spiritual sea. The heck, what is this? Zhang Che freaked out. He was caught unprepared, nearly jumping off the ground. Han Xue was merely his pet, not his subdued beast. How was it possible for him to enter his spiritual sea? Moreover, even if he could turn himself into a beast card, he had to brand his spiritual imprint on him before he could be brought into his spiritual sea, right? Suppressing his astonishment, Zhang Che immediately looked into his spiritual sea, and he saw a golden light between the seven-dot-colored crystal floating high up in the sky, a few beast cards under it. They were all absorbing the rich seven-dot-colored fog present in his spiritual sea greedily. It didn't have to be said that the golden light was naturally Hanshua. All right, Zhang Che understood the situation. All of this must be the work of the seven-dot-colored crystal. He was glad to see this happening. First, he didn't have to worry about Han Xue's safety in the future. Second, even if that fellow got hurt by accident, he could still return to his spiritual sea to recuperate. Third, since Han Xue could devour the seven-dot-colored fog in his spiritual sea, there was surely a chance of him advancing in quality in the future. He felt excited just thinking about it. What quality is above gold? Although Zhang Che didn't have an answer for that, even a dummy knew that it would be much better than gold dot quality. A Wu. Just as Zhang Che was focused on his inner world and was wearing a faint smile on his face, the leader of the wolf pack finally couldn't hold it in anymore and raised its head, giving the order to attack. The grassland brown, furred wolves from all sides no longer cared about their fear of the bonfire and pounced at Zhang Che. Heh, I'm not even in a hurry, and yet you are. Since you're adamant on dying, I'll grant your wishes. Zhang Che remained calm. With a wave of his hand, the fiery scorpion, wind shadow wolf, and psychedelic ghost patterned butterfly appeared one after another. At the same time, a green sword appeared in his right palm. The fiery scorpion and wind shadow wolf stood at Zhang Che's side to protect him the moment they appeared, while the psychedelic ghost patterned butterfly took the initiative to fly towards where the wolf pack was most concentrated. Beating its wings, hallucination dot inducing powder scattered in a circular area of several dozen meters. These grassland brown, furred wolves were only two dot star bronze dot quality exotic beasts. 
how could they possibly resist the effects of the psychedelic ghost pattern butterfly's powder? Those that were covered in the poison powder fell limply on the ground, their vision blurred. The remaining wolves were astonished and retreated in all directions, their gazes toward the psychedelic ghost pattern butterfly filled with fear. The pitiful wolf pack had never seen such a scary offensive method. Their ferocity fell greatly, no longer interested in attacking Zhang Che. However, the miserable grassland brown, furred wolves had no idea that an even more horrifying attack was about to befall them. Zhang Che stood by the bonfire with a relaxed expression, the fiery scorpion and the wind shadow wolf each guarding a side, fending off the attacks of several grassland brown. Furred wolves, allowing him to oversee the entire battle peacefully, in search of the location where the wolves were most densely packed. Looking over, Zhang Che quickly discovered the location where the wolf pack was most concentrated was where the extraordinarily large wolf was at. Dot pointing his sword at the alpha wolf, Zhang Che activated the sonic wave attack without any hesitation. Invisible sound waves immediately spread out, and the wolves in front of him immediately fell down in a fan shape, their miserable cries ringing out ceaselessly. The alpha wolf held on strong, however. After being struck by the attack, a few trails of blood trickled out of its seven orifices. It let out a mournful howl and turned around, leading the remaining fraction of wolves to escape into the grasslands. Seeing this, Zhang Che revealed a smirk on his face. Another mutated puffer sword suddenly appeared in his left hand, and he activated the sonic wave attack once more, which happened to catch all the remaining wolves in its attack range. This mutated puffer sword was the one at 2.star gold. Quality. The skill's destructive force was stronger. The invisible sound waves swept past, and all the remaining wolves fell over. Over half of them even turned into rays of light immediately, directly killed by the sound waves. It turned out that after taming the golden Eliforce King, Zhang Che erased his spiritual imprint from the ordinary Eliforce card and replaced it with another mutated puffer sword card for any possible needs in the future. He didn't expect it to come in handy so soon. In just the short span of several minutes, the wolf pack that numbered over a hundred was wiped out, just like that. What's left was only for Zhang Che to deal the final blow to the grassland brown, furred wolves that were rendered immobile, and this perfect counterattack would come to an end. At least twenty beast cards dropped. Although the grassland brown, furred wolf strength isn't anything impressive, it will allow me to increase over ten points in fusion. Wielding swords in both hands in high spirits, Zhang Che quickly walked over to where the fallen wolves were at. Light reflected off his swords with every swing he took, and the grassland brown, furred wolves turned into streaks of light one after another. Soon, Zhang Che looked at the stack of two dot star bronze dot quality beast cards in his hand. Finally unable to hold it in, Zhang Che let out a hearty laugh. However, his laughter only went on for less than three seconds before it came to an abrupt stop. He saw the black mass hanging over the bonfire, on the verge of tears. My freaking dinner. It's actually burned. How am I supposed to eat it? Chapter 55 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 055 Bathing in Lightning Translator. Mianbao Editor. Elrianth edited by Red in the end, Zhang Che still didn't get to eat a meal of piping hot roasted meat. When the wolf pack attacked, the bonfire was burning strong. By the time all of the grassland brown, furred wolves were killed, at least twenty minutes had passed, and the meat above the bonfire was burnt to a char. Forget it. I don't have salt and other seasoning this time, anyway. There's probably not much flavor just eating it like that. Zhang Che could only console himself this way, looking at the block of burnt meat above the bonfire, displaying the spirit of Ah Q superscript one to the fullest. However, it was really vexing. A meal was delayed just like that, even obtaining the 20 odd beast cards didn't feel so exciting anymore. The night gradually arrived. The helpless Zhang Che could only eat compressed biscuits along with clear water in the end. As he chewed on it with his brow knitted, he consoled himself inwardly, 
that when I bring the seasonings next time, I can find some weak exotic beast and get Hanshu at to kick it to death. That way I'll be able to eat delicious roasted meat. After finishing his disappointing dinner, Zhang Che pitched his tent by the bonfire. The sky was fully dark by then. This place was deep into the beast world. For safety's sake, Zhang Che summoned all of his subdued beasts, guarding around the tent. Even Han Xue wasn't spared. This fellow had acute senses for danger, it would be stupid not to use him as a sentry. After staying in Zhang Che's spiritual sea for over an hour and having a good meal of seven-dot-colored fog, Han Xue was very unsatisfied with Zhang Che for forcefully kicking him out. Han Xue's mood turned for the better only when Zhang Che asked the seven-dot-colored crystal to open up a path and keep sending seven. Colored fog to him. At midnight, Zhang Che was deep in sleep when Han Xue's restless low neigh suddenly rang out from outside. Zhang Che was jolted awake and quickly sat up, hurriedly putting on his shoes, and came out to take a look. However, he didn't discover anything amiss. The other three subdued beasts responsible for guarding the other directions were still standing silently at their respective posts. Obviously there weren't any signs of danger. However, Han Xue was clearly upset. It immediately came running with short strides to Zhang Che after seeing him, whimpering. Oh you little. What happened? Could there be some exotic beasts around us in hiding? Seeing Han Xue acting so distressed, Zhang Che turned nervous, too. After all, this guy had a sharper sense for danger. Did it really sense some danger approaching them that the fiery scorpion and the others didn't? At Zhang Che's questioning, Han Xue blinked repeatedly and shook his head, looking up at the night sky from time to time. You mean, some aerial beast just flew by? Zhang Che went to full alert. If it truly was so, then it would be troublesome. No matter how powerful the exotic beasts on land were, he could rely on Han Xue's exceptional speed to escape. But if the danger was from the sky, facing those aerial beasts with astonishing speed, how was he supposed to escape successfully? A suffocating sense of crisis suddenly loomed over Zhang Che's heart, bringing panic with it. He felt that the sky was filled with the presence of an unseen enemy. However, Han Xue's reaction left Zhang Che even more confused. Seeing Zhang Che not understanding what it was trying to convey, Han Xue decided to bite on the corner on Zhang Che's clothes, and it started walking in the direction the foot of the mountain range extended toward. You're telling me to quickly hide into the mountains. Although its master still didn't understand exactly what it was trying to convey, at least he understood his intention. Han Xue immediately nodded profusely. Zhang Che seemed to understand now. Han Xue was saying that it was more dangerous if they stayed here, and they needed to hide in the mountains. After pondering for a moment, Zhang Che decided to trust in Han Xue's senses. He immediately turned around and stowed his tent, stuffing it into his backpack. Seeing the anxiety on Han Xue's face becoming more apparent, Zhang Che didn't have time to care about his three subdued beasts. He directly recalled them back into his spiritual sea with a wave of his hand, and he quickly flipped himself over Han Xue's back. Come on, go to a place where you feel safe. Zilvulf Han Xue immediately let out a long neigh and started galloping at top speed. From the very start, Han Xue's speed erupted to the limit, running along the mountain's foot like a bolt of lightning. Zhang Che noticed the severity of the matter from Han Xue's actions. He leaned forward on his mount's back, his brow tightly knitted, thinking about what possible danger was upon them. Han Xue had probably come by this area in the past. It was rather familiar with the topography here, and took no time at all to run to the entrance of a narrow gap between two mountains, lowering its speed, does this fellow want to bring me in here? Looking at the dark, narrow slit in front of him, Zhang Che couldn't help but feel conflicted. It was so freaking dark in there, who knew what danger lay beyond? Right at this moment, the sky suddenly lit up, as if it was daytime. Using that light, Zhang Che saw a little of what was in the narrow ravine in that split second. Dot in the time it took for a spark to ignite, 
Zhang Che only managed to see that the ravine seemed to extend up towards the mountain. It was unlike what he had imagined, that it would be a bottomless abyss. Hong Long Long. A few breaths after the light faded, the rumblings of thunder were heard. The entire world seemed to be shaking along to the rumblings. Is a storm approaching? Zhang Che couldn't resist turning back to take a look. He saw silver snakes of lightning dancing in the sky, the brilliant light stung his eyes, forcing him to close his eyes. Immediately afterwards, an unending wave of thunder rang out, like the concentrated firing of cannons, nearing causing Zhang Che to lose his hearing, the force of nature on this side of the gate is actually this horrifying. The concentrated rumbling of thunder was only the beginning, however. Even more lightning bolts flashed, illuminating the sky to the point it seemed like daytime. The wilderness in all directions could be seen clearly. Making use of the lightning flashes, Han Xue moved out once more, traveling along the narrow ravine between the mountains. Zhang Che didn't care about Han Xue's destination. Instead, he kept looking back towards the grasslands he was at previously. He discovered that the area was nearly devoured by the lightning, as countless bolts of lightning rained down. It looked like a scene from hell. A layer of cold sweat seeped out from Zhang Che's back. He felt immensely grateful. Fortunately Han Xue realized something was amiss and brought him away immediately. Otherwise, wouldn't he have been struck to death by lightning and turned into a block of burnt coal? Zhang Che had no way of knowing whether that scenario would have come true, but to his astonishment, he saw a black figure in the sky going back and forth within that area filled with concentrated lightning bolts. Zhang Che was sure that he didn't see wrongly. That black figure was swimming in lightning, as if it was taking a bath. Bolts upon bolts of gaudy lightning struck on that black figure, sending countless mini lightning snakes spiraling away. They were actually unable to hurt it in the slightest. As a beastmaster who aspires to reach great heights, this kind of exotic beast should be what I strive for. Zhang Che was dazzled by the sight, and his mind drifted away in fascination. Underscore 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 translators note. 1. Ah Q Q. Ah Q is a fictional character in a novella written by Lu Sun in the 1920s, The True Story of Ah Q. Chapter 56 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 056 Changes in Spiritual Sea Translator. Mianbao Editor. Elrianth edited by Red. Although he was really coveting the exotic beast bathing in lightning, Zhang Che understood that obtaining such a beast as his subdued beast was surely part of the In This Lifetime series. That was a thunderstorm, and yet that exotic beast was flying in it in pleasure. How horrifyingly powerful must its strength be e.in Xianxia novels, those powerful immortal cultivators experiencing a lightning tribulation is probably something like that, right? But I believe that I will be able to have such a powerful subdued beast in the future. With the mysterious seven-dot-colored crystal in his possession, Zhang Che had such confidence. However, that was something for consideration in the future. At present, it was better to leave this place as soon as possible, to avoid being caught up in that expanding thunderstorm. Otherwise, he'd really be turned into ash, and all his sky-high ambitions would be for nothing. Exerting its strength, the impatient Han Xue immediately let out a long neigh and ran along the path in the narrow ravine, borrowing the light from the thunderstorm. The path was full of twists and turns. On the way, Zhang Che could feel his field of vision growing increasingly narrow, surrounded by mountain cliffs on all sides. Who knew how Han Xue ran to this secluded corner in the past? As a horse king with incredible speed as its forte, shouldn't it favor the vast grasslands? Zhang Che didn't have the mood to care about this, either. There shouldn't be any danger in here, from the looks of it, that was enough for now. Even though Han Xue had been running for quite a long while and they were deep into the mountain range, the thunder still showed no signs of stopping. Zhang Che even heard the sound of rain, 
it was now raining the heaven's tears out there. From the looks of it, it seemed like this area would be engulfed in a torrential rain soon. Zhang Che only hoped that a flash flood wouldn't occur. Otherwise, this place Han Xue found wasn't going to be safe either. Zhang Che couldn't help but furrow his brow, worrying about their safety. Alas, things had already developed into such a situation. He could only trust that Han Xue would find a safe place to hide from the storm and get through this natural disaster. The lightning flash behind him grew increasingly brighter, and the rumbling of the thunder seemed to be chasing Han Xue. Zhang Che even felt the fine rain approaching his way. Hurry, how much further is the place you're going to? We'll be in danger if we don't get there soon. Zhang Che urged impatiently. Han Xue seemed to know that danger was approaching as well and increased his speed, as if moving to a dangerous dance on this rugged mountain terrain. Finally, a dark cave appeared under the face of the mountain. Han Xue jumped into the cave without any hesitation. Hey, are you sure it's safe here? Zhang Che was scared. He subconsciously felt that this dark cave gave off an unsettling vibe. However, the thunderstorm was approaching from behind them, and he had no choice but to let Han Xue go ahead. The result greatly exceeded Zhang Che's expectations, however. The cave seemed really dark on the outside, but it wasn't deep. It extended less than 20 meters in before opening up to a wider area. Dismounting the horse, Zhang Che took a short, stealthy walk and went around the whole cave. There weren't any powerful exotic beasts in here as he imagined, nor were there any treasures to be found. Zhang Che felt a burden lift from his chest, while feeling slightly disappointed at the same time. Aside from feeling confused, Zhang Che couldn't resist looking at Han Xue and asked, there's nothing special about this place. How did you find it? After hearing Zhang Che's question, it neighed excitedly and walked to the wall. It stuck out its long tongue and licked at the coarse wall of the cave, revealing a satisfied look. The heck, this beast still has such a hobby. Zhang Che felt his scalp going numb. Could this fellow actually enjoys licking rock? Dotum? Something seems amiss. Dot making use of the light from the thunderstorm outside, Zhang Che discovered that there seemed to be some grayish white crystal particles on the face of the wall, could this be a natural salt mine? Zhang Che immediately thought of this possibility. He walked over with wide strides and used this finger to swipe at the powdery particles, tasting them. As expected, a salty taste accompanied with slight bitterness assaulted the tip of his tongue that IT truly is a salt mine. Seeing its master taking a taste at the good stuff it found, Han Xue couldn't help but grew excited and let out a neigh, asking to be rewarded. You fool! Zhang Che didn't know whether to be angry or amused. He couldn't resist patting his palm on Han Xue's long face, saying, this has a bitter taste to it. What's so delicious about it? Wait till I leave the beast world, I'll let you have a good taste of what fine salt is like. All right, after wasting so much time, this place actually turned out to be where the Elephors herd replenished their salt levels, but, do exotic beasts have to consume salt? Zhang Che couldn't help but wonder. Alas, Han Xue couldn't speak. Even if there was some special component in the salt here that was beneficial to the growth of exotic beasts, he wouldn't learn of it. The sound of rain and thunder outside grew even more violent. This cave Han Xue found was situated at a higher elevation, Zhang Che didn't have to worry about flash floods. Thus, he decided to set up his tent and went to sleep. When he woke up, the sky was already bright. Although the sound of the storm was a little lower now, it was still raging on violently. Zhang Che walked to the entrance of the cave to take a look outside. The whole world seemed to be covered in a layer of rain, and the areas at a lower altitude were flooded with muddy water, flowing at high speed. It seems like I can't go back anytime soon. Zhang Che shook his head and returned to the cave. He took out a piece of compressed biscuit and sat at the entrance, taking small bites of it uninterestedly. After eating a piece of the biscuit, Zhang Che only drank a few mouthfuls of water. Only the heavens knew how many days this flood would continue on for. 
If he didn't ration his supplies properly, it would be hard to find a clean water source. Zhang Che was right. This storm lasted for almost a whole week's time. Although the final two days of rain gradually subsided, looking into the distance, the flood was even worse than before. If I still can't leave in a few days, I really have no choice but to drink that muddy water below. Looking at the mostly depleted water bag in his hand, Zhang Che licked his dry lips, feeling deeply worried. In the few days he was stuck in this cave, although there were enough compressed biscuits to sustain him, the same couldn't be said for portable water. Moreover, with the extended rain, the cave became unusually humid. Zhang Che even felt like he could squeeze water out of his undergarments. All of his clothes had been cycled through, but they were still in usable condition. Han Xue was better off. It had been hiding in Zhang Che's spiritual sea for the past few days, devouring the seven-dot-colored fog non-dot-stop. It didn't have to eat nor drink, there wasn't much difference from a subdued beast. While thinking about the carefree Han Xue in his spiritual sea, Zhang Che suddenly trembled, there were sudden changes occurring in his spiritual sea. Chapter 57 You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 057 Upgraded Quality Translator Mianbao Editor Elrianth edited by Red While thinking about the carefree Han Xue in his spiritual sea, Zhang Che's entire body suddenly shook, something was happening in his spiritual sea. In the empty skies of his spiritual sea, a strong seven-dot-colored light suddenly shone from above the crystal, illuminating the entire spiritual sea as a seven-dot-colored space. What is going on? Zhang Che was astonished, thinking that something bad had happened. In the next moment, the rainbow rays gathered, forming a pillar and shining directly at the psychedelic ghost patterned butterfly card below. The pillar of light seemed to contain a suction force, sucking the psychedelic ghost patterned butterfly card up to the skies of the spiritual sea, passing by the golden ball of light that represented Han Xue, stopping directly below the rainbow crystal. Could it be? Zhang Che was ecstatic, as he guessed at a certain possibility. His heart beat faster, full of anticipation. Focusing on his inner world, he saw a vortex suddenly growing from within the psychedelic ghost patterned butterfly card enveloped in the pillar of rainbow light, madly devouring the radiance above it. At this moment, the other beast cards and the golden ball of light representing Han Xue weren't getting a shred of the seven-dot-colored fog at all, okay, is this considered as focused nurturing? Zhang Che was at a loss for words. He concentrated harder, afraid to miss what was happening next. As the abundant rainbow fog disappeared from his spiritual sea, the first change occurred on Han Xue's golden ball of light. This fellow seemed to have felt the thick rainbow energy from above, and hurriedly flew upwards like a star. The golden elephors king had a mind of his own, after all. Unlike the beast cards, they wouldn't move an inch without Zhang Che's instructions, no matter how much they thirsted for the rainbow energy. Now that strong energy fluctuations were discovered above, how could Han Xue not be tempted? BL.net however, that seemingly short distance was like an endless galaxy. No matter how hard Han Xue tried, he wasn't able to get one bit closer. Han Xue nearly wept in frustration. The golden ball of light rushed out of the spiritual sea and transformed into its original appearance by Zhang Che's side, neighing in displeasure. He seemed to be saying, why is that fellow allowed to feast on it, and not me? This thinking wasn't wrong, it was similar to that saying of Ah Q, the monk can move, but not me. Zhang Che patted his head, amused, reprimanding it, stop making a scene. This will happen to you in the future as well, when you accumulate enough energy. Han Xue stayed by Zhang Che's side, his eyes shining in anticipation. This fellow was thinking, that when I get stronger and is able to run faster and longer, will we be going to find a nice female Eliforce? The Eliforces from the herd I was in previously were truly a little too ugly. In his spiritual sea, the vortex on the psychedelic ghost patterned butterfly card grew increasingly bigger, and even swallowed the beast card in the end. Jean Che could only see the twisted rainbow rays being sucked into it non-dot-stop. Time trickled by. 
Zhang Che, immersed in his spiritual sea, felt as if a very long time passed. Finally the vortex slowly stopped devouring the rainbow rays, and turned into a mass of radiant light shaped like a cocoon, quietly floating beneath the rainbow crystal. Is this going to take a freaking long time, too? Zhang Che cursed. He really wanted to see the changes to the psychedelic ghost pattern butterfly card immediately. As if it had heard Zhang Che's wish, countless cracks suddenly appeared on the polychromatic cocoon a moment later, and it shattered into countless dots of light, revealing a bronze beast card. Zhang Che went wild with joy after seeing the beast card was upgraded to bronze quality, nearly laughing out loud. His guess was right on the spot, the seven-dot colored crystal was really able to upgrade the quality of beast cards. Equals 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 psychedelic ghost pattern butterfly level. Two star level 20 quality. Bronze type. Original combat body characteristics. Able to disperse poison powder with strong hallucination effect weakness. Fire attribute attacks potential. B rank. 25% chance of breaking through current level, 5% chance of breaking through current quality. Chances halved on next upgrade. Level upgradable 3 times, quality upgradable 3 times, cultivating directions. Equals 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 its quality upgraded from black iron to bronze. The psychedelic ghost pattern butterflies hallucination inducing effect became even stronger it was probably potent enough to put down most 2.star silver dot quality exotic beasts. The only thing that made Zhang Che sigh inwardly was that despite the potential of the beast card was still indicating B rank, both the number of times upgradable for quality and level had dropped from 4 times to 3 times. From the looks of it, no matter if he used fusion skill to raise its level, or the rainbow crystal to raise its quality, they were still operating within the limits of the beast's potential. This meant that he couldn't increase the beast's level or quality without limits. Thinking about it, this was normal. It couldn't be that an earthworm could really turn into a dragon, could it? This provided Zhang Che with a train of thought. When he chose which beast cards to use in the future, its quality didn't necessarily have to be high, but its potential must be good. After all, even a gold dot quality exotic beast with the lowest E rank potential could only upgrade its quality once. If it were some bronze dot quality exotic with B rank potential or higher, it would surely surpass the former by a large margin in the end. Take the psychedelic ghost pattern butterfly, for example. Although it was at the lowest black iron quality, this fellow had high potential. In the end it could even surpass gold dot quality. Of course, this was only applicable to Zhang Che, who had a heaven dot defying treasure, the rainbow crystal. If it were any ordinary beast master, naturally they would want their subdued beast's base quality to be as high as possible. The psychedelic ghost pattern butterfly took about a week's time to increase its quality. Zhang Che couldn't help but look forward to his other beast cards that were at a higher quality. How long would they take to raise their quality? The rain gradually stopped. The devastating mountain flash flood subsided at a speed visible to the naked eye, too. Zhang Che knew that he could leave this mountain range very soon. He waited in that cave for another day. The next morning, Zhang Che rode Hanshua and slowly descended the mountain along the path they came from. Although they came across some areas that were still flooded from time to time, they did not affect his traveling. However, when he was about halfway through his journey, Zhang Che was stunned by the sight before him. The area before him was originally a valley, but at this moment the path was blocked off by countless rocks. Evidently, part of the mountain had collapsed from the flash flood that there's no way to go now. What should I do? Zhang Che scanned his surroundings, trying to find a way to get past the obstruction. To his dismay, he discovered that unless he had an aerial subdued beast or pet he could ride, there was no way to pass through from here. Zhang Che sighed helplessly. He could only pat on Han Xue's head and order him to turn back, hoping to find another way out. Suddenly, 
Zhang Che noticed in his peripheral vision that there seemed to be something moving in that collapsed rock pile. Chapter 58 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 058 Above Gold Translator Mianbao Editor Elrianth edited by Red Hm. What's this thing? Zhang Che immediately told Han Xue to stop. He turned around and scanned the area. His expression froze for a moment before revealing a joyous look. Equals 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 Scarlet Flame Drake, level. For star, level 38, quality. Dark gold characteristics. Excels at wielding flames, unparalleled defense weakness. Water and ice attribute attacks innate attribute. Fire mastery, normal attacks augmented with fire attribute skill. Liquefying scarlet flames. Breaths out scorching scarlet flames up to 20 meters long, able to melt steel instantly, lasts 3 seconds. This skill is extremely exhausting of vital energy, user needs to rest for a full day before it is able to use it again. Halo. Fire resistance potential. D rank cultivating directions. Equals 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 although the exotic beast was buried under the debris, and almost its entire body was submerged in the muddy water, Zhang Che immediately saw the exotic beast's attributes despite only seeing a sharp claw exposed, its surface seemingly burnt. In that instant, Zhang Che felt as if he struck the jackpot on the lottery. His heart pumped violently, his smile reaching from ear to ear. This Scarlet Flame Drake's attributes were truly too powerful. It was so strong that even though this fellow was on the brink of death, Zhang Che didn't dare to act recklessly. It turned out that the tier above gold was dark gold. Compared to the attributes of a gold.quality beast, a dark gold.quality beast's attributes were like the difference between an ordinary exotic beast to the animals native to Mercury. The difference between the two was truly too great. Just look at the overall attributes of the Scarlet Flame Drake. Leaving its innate attribute of fire mastery aside, that skill, liquefying Scarlet Flames, was even more terrifying. It was actually able to melt steel instantaneously, how high of a temperature was required to achieve that. What made Zhang Che even more surprised was that the Dark Gold Dot Quality Scarlet Flame Drake actually had a halo attribute. Although there was no detailed explanation of the fire resistance halo, Zhang Che could roughly guess that the Scarlet Flame Drake would probably be unaffected by ordinary fire attribute attacks, unless it was a mythical dot level beast like a phoenix that controlled fire. Only then would there be a chance of it being hurt by flames. This was the true strength of the tier above gold dot quality. It was no wonder that Zhang Che had never seen an exotic beast above gold dot quality. If there were more of such exotic beasts, it would be impossible for the humans on Mercury to withstand the invasion of exotic beasts thrice. They would directly go extinct. Even so, this was only a dark gold dot quality exotic beast. What was the tier above dark gold, then? From the potential of the Scarlet Flame Drake, it could be seen that its level and quality could be enhanced two more times. This also meant that there are at least two tiers above dark gold dot quality. No matter how low level an exotic beast was, at such a quality, it should possess devastating abilities, right? Those were still very far from Zhang Che's reach. Currently he was facing two very tough choices. One, to pretend that he didn't see this scarlet flame drake buried under this mudslide, and turn around to look for an exit out of this mountain range. After all, this fellow's strength was truly too horrifying. Even though it was on the brink of death, it still had the power to kill Zhang Che in an instant. 2. For Zhang Che to muster his courage and risk his life to kill the Scarlet Flame Drake. There was a certain probability of obtaining a beast card that he could only get in his dreams, and he would have a shockingly powerful subdued beast when his Beastmaster tier rose to tier 4. If he chose to leave immediately, Zhang Che naturally didn't have to bear any risks. However, he would also miss out on the chance to obtain a powerful subdued beast. On the other hand, choosing to kill the Scarlet Flame Drake that was already on the verge of dying, 
there was a high chance of him losing his life instead, though there was also a chance of obtaining an invaluable reward. For a short while, Jean Che's expression experienced rapid changes, unable to make up his mind. As for emulating the time when he tamed Hanshua, letting the rainbow crystal heal that scarlet flame Drake's injuries in hopes of winning its favor and get it to become his pet, Zhang Che didn't even dare to think of that. Zhang Che would be tired of living if he really did that. The golden Elephorce king was a tameable, herbivorous exotic beast. That was why he had luckily succeeded. The scarlet flame Drake was a ferocious beast by all measures. Once it recovered a little of its strength and got a taste of the rainbow fog, it would surely gobble up Zhang Che without even spitting out his bones at the first opportunity it got. After thinking for a long while, Zhang Che finally grit his teeth and decided to take his chances. Damn it, I'm going all in. My life will change completely if I succeed in my gamble here. This scarlet flame drake was already on the brink of death, anyway. With such grave injuries, it definitely wouldn't be able to use its liquefying scarlet flame skill. Moreover, this exotic beast was almost buried under the mudslide entirely, and it didn't even have the strength to crawl out. Even if it made its final retaliation, how devastating could it be e.as long as I pay more attention, I will surely be able to kill it successfully. For safety's sake, Zhang Che retreated far away and summoned the fiery scorpion, ordering it to crawl toward the exposed claw of the scarlet flame drake. Under such circumstances, the psychedelic ghost, patterned butterfly and wind shadow wolf weren't of any use at all. Zhang Che could only hope that the fiery scorpion's stinger was effective. The fiery scorpion followed Zhang Che's command loyally. It quickly crawled over, crossing a puddle of water and went up the scarlet flame drake's exposed claw, stinging at its flesh. Pa, the fiery scorpion's sharp stinger directly snapped in two, yellowish-brown fluid flowing out of IT that IT snapped. It snapped. Snapped. Zhang Che's eyes went wide, nearly falling off from Han Xue's back. This was the so dot called unparalleled defense in the Scarlet Flame Drake's freaking attributes. Zhang Che really wanted to curse out loud. He couldn't even penetrate its defense, what else could he do? One had to know that the penetrative strength of the fiery scorpion stinger was exceptional. It could penetrate even a thin steel plate, and yet it snapped at the resistance of the scarlet flame drake's skin. Exactly how strong was the defensive strength of this ferocious beast? Although the fiery scorpion failed to penetrate the scarlet flame drake's defense, the dying beast's exposed claw twitched for a moment after being attacked, as if it wanted to climb out of the mudslide, but failed in the end. Ah, that frustration in Zhang Che's heart. The Scarlet Flame Drake's injuries were obviously so severe that it could barely move a muscle at all, yet he couldn't do a thing to it. It really left one wanting to smash their head against the wall. What should I do? Do I make an attempt myself using the mutated puffer sword to see if it can penetrate its defense? Zhang Che was conflicted, not daring to take a step forward after hesitating for some time. If the Scarlet Flame Drake were to gain a second wind for even a second, he would surely be killed. The only solution was to see if the mutated Puffer Sword Sonic Wave attack worked against it. This was the only way Zhang Che could think of. If it failed, then he really had no choice but to give up. Zhang Che summoned both mutated Puffer Swords, wielding one in each hand. He pointed them at the mudslide where the Scarlet Flame Drake was buried activating both of their skills at the same time. Two waves of invisible sound containing different levels of might burst forth, carrying Zhang Che's hope with them. Chapter 59 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 059 Bountiful Return Translator Mianbao Editor Elrient edited by red faint ripples spread out on the surface of the muddy pool of water. The ripples quickly spread, while Zhang Che watched unblinkingly. The invisible sound wave swept past, the scarlet flame drake's exposed claw twitched slightly and rapidly before becoming motionless again. Just as Zhang Che thought the sonic wave attack was ineffective, the pile of rock and mud suddenly erupted in all directions. The rocks and mud nearly struck Zhang Che. 
a majestic figure, albeit filled with injuries, suddenly stood up. A pair of long, narrow scarlet eyes stared in Zhang Che's direction, revealing its ferocity. Zilvul Hanshua neighed in fear, retreating a few steps uncontrollably before its limbs gave out on it. It nearly fell on the muddy mountain path and threw Zhang Che off its back. It's still alive. Zhang Che's complexion went incomparably pale, staring at the standing exotic beast, his mind blank. The scarlet flame drake's sharp eyes made Zhang Che feel as if he was in an ice cave, he almost couldn't move at all. At the same time, Zhang Che finally got a good look at this ferocious exotic beast's appearance. It looked like a large fierce drake, nearly a meter and a half tall, and approximately three meters long. It was obviously a carnivorous exotic beast, but it had a pair of horns curving to the front, very similar to a bull's. Although it looked fierce and mighty, the Scarlet Flame Drake's condition right now was extremely poor. Its entire body looked as if it was burned, with not a strand of hair remaining. Its charred skin was filled with scars, with only a tiny fraction of the exposed skin revealing some reddish-yellow spots. Its original appearance was probably extremely pleasing to the eyes. There was a wound on its head that extended from its left horn to its lower jaw, and its head was dyed from the mixture of its crimson blood and the muddy water. Its left claw was even bent at a harrowing angle, yet it still supported its majestic figure proudly, unwilling to give in to its deadly injuries. Obviously, the Scarlet Flame Drake was struck by lightning during the thunderstorm a few days ago, and was swept here by the mudslide, buried under the rocks and mud, barely hanging on to life with its last breath. If it weren't struck by the thunderstorm, ordinary impacts wouldn't have been able to hurt this ferocious exotic beast with its insane defenses. Woof, a fierce bark rang out from the scarlet flame drake's mouth. Han Xue's body went limp once more, kneeling to the ground and threw Zhang Che forward that I'm finished. Zhang Che sighed inwardly as he fell, devastated. The scarlet flame drake didn't die, there was no way he could escape from this. All it needed to do was jump forward and claw at him, and he would be shredded apart. However, just as Zhang Che was thrown forward, he discovered, to his astonishment, that the scarlet flame drake that seemed to be looking for blood suddenly turned into a streak of light. Even after he fell forward on the muddy mountain path, Zhang Che's head was still raised, looking ahead with a surprised expression. His gaze was filled with disbelief. The scarlet flame drake actually died just like that. He didn't have the mind to care about his delayed happiness, nor the pain coming from his chest. Zhang Che kept his head raised, staring at the light the Scarlet Flame Drake transformed into, chanting madly in his heart, Beast Card. Beast Card. Beast Card. Equals sad face you kill the Scarlet Flame Drake. Obtained 160 points of soul force. Obtained Scarlet Flame Drake Card. Equals equals as if it sensed the cheering in Zhang Che's heart, the streak of light really didn't dissipate just like that. Instead, it quickly came together and turned into a dark gold card, floating down to the mud water. Ha ha ha, a beast card really dropped. Zhang Che laughed maniacally. He crawled up to his feet with much difficulty and ran forward to the body of water. He didn't care about getting himself dirty, and scooped up the beast card from the muddy water. Holding the card between his palms, his body trembled from excitement. The Scarlet Flame Drake card was clear and translucent, dark gold in color. The four hexagrams were neatly positioned, looking aesthetically beautiful. A four-dot star dark gold dot quality beast card. Holding this beast card that represented a powerful subdued beast, Zhang Che's first thought was actually making a guess at how much this card could be sold for. Alas, poverty had limited Zhang Che's imagination. He couldn't make an estimation on this card's value, he only knew that Beastmasters would go crazy fighting for this card if he let go of it. Be no calm of course, Zhang Che would never sell such good stuff, even if he was beaten to death. When the day came where he advanced to a tier 4 Beastmaster, the Scarlet Flame Drake would become his strongest combat force. Zhang Che could even wrestle against high-dot-tier beastmasters without any exceptional subdued beasts, 
not to mention looking down upon most mid-tier beastmasters proudly. This was the most excited Zhang Che had ever been, wanting to raise his beastmaster tier as soon as possible. It was akin to someone suddenly obtaining a godly piece of equipment when playing video games, but their current level was insufficient to equip it. Going forward, they would surely work their hardest to level up, disregarding day and night. However, Zhang Che understood that this matter couldn't be rushed. Let alone advancing to tier 4, he wasn't even a tier 3 beastmaster right now. He still had to hunt tens of 2.star exotic beasts to break through. Now, should I continue looking around in this area and see if I can find more exotic beasts injured from the thunderstorm? Jean Che couldn't help but felt tempted after tasting such a huge benefit. The Scarlet Flame Drake was certainly not the only exotic beast hurt from the horrifying thunderstorm. If Zhang Che would searched carefully, he'd surely find more. After thinking it through carefully, however, Zhang Che decided to give up on this enticing thought. Him successfully killing the Scarlet Flame Drake was all a lucky coincidence. Instead of saying that the Scarlet Flame Drake was killed by Zhang Che, it would be better to say this powerful exotic beast was already at the end of its life after being struck by the thunderstorm. The two sonic wave attacks from Zhang Che were only the final straw that broke the camel's back. However, if he encountered other powerful exotic beasts, Zhang Che didn't dare to guarantee that their injuries would be as severe. If he were ever so slightly careless, he'd become those powerful exotic beasts' food. With such a huge reward already in his bag, Zhang Che couldn't afford to take such risks. One's eyes are bigger than their stomach. We should always learn to be content. I'd better leave this mountain range as soon as possible and head back in the safety zone's direction. Over a week's time had passed on this trip to the beast world, with a bountiful harvest. Zhang Che wanted to go back and rest for a few days, and keep his ill mother company. Not caring about the mud all over him. Zhang Che directly mounted Han Xue and got him to head back, searching for a way to leave this mountain range. Chapter 60 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 060 Fear not of a woman's many changes, but that her weight only changes in one direction. Translator Mianbao Editor Elrianth edited by Red Qian Wei City, in a standalone villa within the military compound. Huang Tailan was sitting on her bed, leaning against the headboard as she propped her chubby cheeks with both hands, wearing a faint, sweet smile. She muttered, A.I., I wonder how Zhang Xiaoche is doing now. It's been over a week since he departed, and he's still not back. Who knows if he encountered any danger. Once she remembered that Zhang Che had already been in the dangerous beast world for over a week, her smile gradually faded away. A troubled look came over her face, her worry could be seen in her eyes. Love was always in a young woman's mind. A chubby woman had the right to think about love, too. Huang Tailan couldn't explain why she slowly came to like Zhang Che either. This man who hardly spoke a word, and didn't seem to have a single good point about him, truly wasn't worthy of a woman falling for him. However, for some reason, Huang Tailan took a fancy to him. The love between young men and women were usually like that, unaffected by any external factors. As long as the person caught your eyes, you would slowly lose yourself, unable to withdraw. Aya, uh, I like him so much, but does he like me even a tiny bit? Huang Tailan started worrying about this problem as her thoughts ran wild. B Noel de M. However, she realized that Zhang Che's attitude towards her had changed for the better to a large degree. In the past, this guy would barely acknowledge her. Recently, not only did he accept the beast card she gifted him, he even promised to present her with a better gift. Of course, Huang Tailan directly neglected the fact that the return gift was based upon the fact that she refused to take back the fiery scorpion. Zhang Che promised her a return gift purely as thanks for her help. As the ancient saying goes, if you put your heart into it, you can even break metal. I believe in you, Miss Huang Tailan. You can surely do it. Huang Tailan pumped her meaty fist, cheering herself. 
Then, should I give losing weight another try? Men don't really like chubby women, do they? Just as this thought flashed in her mind, Huang Tailan shook her head resolutely. No, even if I want to go on a diet, that should be after Zhang Xiaoche falls in love with me. Otherwise, how do I prove that he truly likes me as a person, though, I am still me after I lose weight, right? Aya, stop thinking about this. I feel so complicated. I'll just let nature run its course. Huang Tailan shook her head forcefully, expelling the complicated thoughts in her mind and prepared to shut the lights and sleep. There was a knock on the door, followed by a gentle voice asking, Lan Lan, you're still awake at this hour. Can mommy come in? Before Huang Tai Lan even gave her permission, the doorknob was twisted open from the outside. A middle-aged woman in pajamas walked in with a gentle smile. The woman's facial features were rather similar to Huang Tai Lan. Her face had an air of wealthiness to it, but was decorated with the marks of time. She was probably a beauty in her prime. Mom, why do you always act like that? Huang Tai Lan showed a helpless look. Although her mother always asked for permission to enter her room, she never waited for her reply before coming in. Oh, is my Lan Lan having a video call with a male classmate and is afraid of being interrupted by mommy? Zhong Yuching walked over with a faint teasing smile on her face and sat down on the bed. Huang Tai Lan showed a depressed look, pointing at her body, saying, Mom, look at all this meat. Do you think anyone would be willing to have a video call with me? Zhong Yuching chuckled. She patted her daughter's chubby cheeks, saying, Who told you to be such a glutton since young? Serves you right for being this fat. Are you my biological mother? Huang Tai Lan tried her hardest to open her eyes wide, but it still wasn't enough. I did as you all said and worked out more. Although I lost my fat, but my muscles grew. I'm in despair, do you know that? I told you to exercise, but you silly girl went to work out with your father. Zhong Yuching couldn't keep her mouth closed from laughing. She continued, but don't worry. Our Lanlin's genes are great. You'll surely slim down in a year or two. Then it'll really be a girl's many changes, every change a different look. I guarantee you'll have more suitors than your father has subordinates. Huang Tailan pouted, I'm afraid there won't be many changes, and that I won't ever slim down. Zhong Yuching chuckled once more. In the end, she laid down on the bed, and the two started playing around. After a while, Zhong Yuching sat up and asked, Right, Lan Lan, it'll be your 18th birthday in a few days' time. Is there something you want as your present? Or should I go find your daddy and ask him to get you a gold dot quality beast card? That I want Zhang Xiaoche. The problem is can you get me one? Huang Tailan cursed inwardly. She shook her head, answering, forget it, I'm still studying, I won't need one for now. Gift me a better beast card when I successfully enroll into university. Speaking of beast cards, Huang Tailan couldn't help but wonder what the beast card Zhang Xiaoche promised her would be like. Just thinking about it made her look forward to receiving it. At this moment, Zhang Che was lying in his tent quietly, waiting for his drowsiness to kick in. Riding around on Hanshue in the mountain range for almost the entire day, Zhang Che finally came to the outskirts of the mountain range. He could already see the vast grasslands not far away. Although he really wanted to travel through the night and get back to the safety zone, he knew how dangerous it was during nighttime in the beast world. He might find himself surrounded by exotic beasts if he was even slightly careless. Left without a choice, he could only pitch his tent on a level area and wait out the night first. Although Zhang Che was hurrying on his way the whole day, he killed many exotic beasts, too. He could feel that he was only a step away from advancing into a Tier 3 Beastmaster. Once he advanced into Tier 3, Zhang Che could employ two more subdued beasts, totaling eight of them. His strength would rise greatly again. However, all of this was under the prerequisite that John Che had to obtain a few decent three dot star cards. A pity that the Scarlet Flame Drake can only be used when I reach tier four. 
Otherwise, I wouldn't have to worry about beast cards, I could just venture deep into the beast world directly and steamroll over the exotic beasts. As long as I don't encounter those overly powerful beasts, there basically aren't any worthy opponents. Thinking of the 4. Star Dark Gold. Quality Scarlet Flame Drake card in his backpack, Zhang Che could hardly suppress the itch in his heart. Alas, this matter couldn't t be rushed, after all. It wouldn't be as easy to advance to Tier 4. A Tier 4 Beastmaster was already officially among the ranks of a mid tier Beastmasters. The amount of soul force needed was horrifyingly high, and he needed to kill exotic beasts that were at least 3. Star to have a certain growth. That tiny bit of soul force from killing 1. Star or 2. Star beasts are almost negligible. Of course, that was only limited to low. Quality exotic beasts. If Zhang Che could hunt large amounts of high. Quality exotic beasts, even 1. Star beasts would provide sufficient soul force, but where do I find that many high. Quality exotic beasts to kill? It's better to find 3. Star or above exotic beasts and aim to rise to tier 4 as fast as possible. As he thought about the future, Zhang Che gradually grew drowsy and slipped into the land of dreams.